This country always needs good citizens. Over the last few years, more and more young people have been getting more interested in elections and voting. I'm George Turner, this is the iCitizen Forum. Today we're at George Washington University to speak to Executive Director of Rob the Vote, Heather Smith, to find out why. In 2004, something really spectacular happened and turnout amongst young voters increased by the largest margins in history. Um, it went up by nine percentage points for voters under 30. Uh, which was more than double the increase of the overall population turnout. So young people, huge surge at the polls. And while that really could have been a one-time thing, in 2006 we saw the same thing happen. It was the largest increase in youth voter turnout between two midterm elections in history. Voters under 30 participating in the electoral process is on the rise. So is there going to be another upward trend at the next election? All signs point to yes. It's our goal for the next 11 months is to register 2 million young people to vote. It'll be the largest youth voter registration campaign in history. What would you attribute the, the increase in youth voter turnout in 2004 and 2006 to? I think there's two primary reasons for it. One, there's just a whole new generation of young people entering the electorate. So, you know, unlike their older brothers and sisters of Generation X, there's a new generation. We call them the millennial generation. Uh, that's just increasingly engaged, way more active in their communities, uh, way more likely to participate uh, in elections. And the second is that voters under 30 were being targeted. And, and what issues today? I mean, if it was censorship in the 90s, yeah. so what's, what's affecting them today? We, we ask, actually, young people every day, what, you know, what issue do you want to see politicians pay attention to? What issue do you want to see the campaigns talking about? We see you know, pretty consistently right now that the top issues are the war, health care. You know, 18 to 29 year olds are the most uninsured age group in our country, so affording health care often. It's getting a good job and it's affording to go to college. Do you think if we look at today's generation, we can see a picture of what political views of the future, like the mainstream political views, will become? Uh, I, I do believe you can. If you look over history, that has happened. So. The 20s and 30s, very, very um, democratic, the youth vote. And today, those young voters are our oldest voters who are also quite democratic in their voting. If you look in the 80s, Ronald Reagan, he just, young people loved him. They went crazy for him. Those young voters now are the middle-aged voters, which make up the Republican base, and they vote more Republican than any other age group. So right now, you know, the youth vote is, they're, they're trending quite democratic, but it takes a while for partisanship to, to really be stable. And are you seeing politicians change their programs to take mm -hmm. more account of young voters? Yeah, I mean, two major election cycles in a row, young people increase their turnout at the polls, and that alone is significant. But if you look at the size of this generation, they're huge. There are more people born in 1990 than you know, any other year since the height of the baby boom. They're on track to be about a third of the electorate within the next you know, 10 years. And campaigns notice that. They also know that right now elections are very, very close. So a few new young voters, a few new people entering the electorate who are getting registered, that can make or break an election. Until young people are participating at records that rival that of older voters, and until they're treated by those in power with the same amount of respect and the issues that they care about you know, are, are really paid attention to, um, you know, Rock of Vote will, will, will be out there fighting, giving them the tools to make sure their voice is heard.